So this is our curriculum for single port robotic surgery. And this is the most recent project that was developed based on an expert-based consensus. So we got 22 experts from single port surgery to really identify what unique skills are required which are different from multi-port surgery in order for a surgeon to safely adopt single port surgery. And the result of that was not a single model, but it was a series of models that goes from basic to advanced to procedural models. So in order for us to be able to house our basic and advanced models, we designed this Thunderdome. And this Thunderdome has a unique set where you would place your anti hydrogel anterior abdominal wall and learn to access. And once you access, you have these three different components where you place the models and practice on them. And so let's start off with the models that are placed in this Thunderdome. So first, you have your access, which is really just an abdominal wall, a hydrogel abdominal wall, but it has a fascial layer inside and they're made of variable level of thickness based on different patients that have different thickness of their abdominal walls. Once you get in, you have to actually open the fascial layer, make sure you have an adequate fascial opening, which is very unique for single port, place your single port access dome, and then be able to dock the robot to do the rest of the procedures. The second procedure, although sounding simple, is actually a puzzle piece dissection. But of course, we had to craft this in a way that's unique to single port. So this is placed in the most lateral part of the Thunderdome, where it really encourages internal and external collisions, because a big part of single port is really collision management. The task is to really cut out precisely this puzzle piece, but underneath there are two layers. You have to really dissect between both of these layers, maintaining all the gel-like substance on the puzzle piece, leaving the fascial base on the actual model. Once you're done, you can look at your margins and also make sure that you've dissected completely into that plane that we've identified. Then once you're done with this, we go over to the next model. Since single port surgery is used a lot for reconstruction, we created this, which is a pad of hydrogel, and underneath this fiber fatty tissue is actually a tube or a ureter, and it has a stenotic part in the middle of it. So you have to dissect out this fiber fatty tissue, find the stenotic segment, cut it out, and then do a proximal and distal release, which we've uniquely placed and anchored these here so that you can release a couple of inches when you do that. Once done, you have to spatulate and do an end-to-end -end anastomosis, and then using these tubes, you can actually test the water tightness of that anastomosis. Once you're done with this, you move over to starting the advanced models that we've created. The first one is a vesicourethral anastomosis, and this is a very simplified version of it. Again, a bladder and fiber fatty tissue, a urethra. You anastomose both of them, and then you can test the water tightness of this. Once you're done with this, we move to the most advanced model that we have, which is our perfused inoculation model. So this model is a 10 by 10 piece of hydrogel. Now this tumor has been already cut out that has a tumor that's green and surrounding yellow tissue. So this can be ultrasound. So this, this is ultrasound compatible. So you can place an ultrasound, figure out your margins. Then you can start to mark the tumor margin. Then you cut through the tumor margin where you find two vessels at five and seven o'clock that you have to skeletonize and either clip or suture. Sounds easy, but this is a perfused model. Two tubes in the back here perfuse the entire base. So here's where you have to learn how to suction for yourself or self-suction something that we use in the operating room, a device called ROSI. There are multiple alternatives to that, or we just connect a tube to a pump. So this teaches you how to be able to handle resection of a bloody tumor while being able to handle the suction yourself. Good luck practicing. So as you can see in the video here, this is the Thunderdome with all the models attached to it. So first here, the trainee is starting to really access the model makes an incision, and then makes a fascial incision. Now, of course, you know that our fascial incisions are mostly staggered, and they have to be of adequate size. And so this teaches you how much really of an incision you need to create to prevent collision of the instruments as they're being inserted. You then learn to place the single port dome, which 
is not that difficult, but it requires a little bit of understanding of the technical issues components related to it. There's an internal component, and then there's an external component. Once complete, you can then dock the single port robot, dock the instruments, and then start your practice. So first model, like we discussed, is the puzzle piece this section. So as I explained, you can see a video, and these are instructional videos that we have for those who enroll in the curriculum. You can see an overhead picture of my hands and feet. You also have an internal camera that's showing you the collisions. Now you can see here you actually have to dissect between that gel-like layer and between that deep fascial layer. And you can already notice the immense amount of collisions that you have, but that's why you have that external camera that's showing you where the collisions are happening and how you can avoid that. Once you're done with removing the entire puzzle piece, you can then inspect your margins, but also inspect how deep or how superficial you went. And this is the end-to-end -end anastomosis model. So the ureter or the tube has already been identified. The stenotic segment is being cut out. And then you're spatulating both proximal and distal ends. We've already done a release proximally so that we are doing a tension-free anastomosis. And then you have to do the posterior and anterior layer. Notice I'm using the 12 o'clock arm here to retract. And once you're done, you can see if your anastomosis was perfect or if it's leaking and where it's leaking. This is the vesicourethral anastomosis. So again, just not a tube connecting to another tube, but really you have to release some of that bladder because most of the approaches that we use here are extraperitoneal. So you do have to release a significant amount of the bladder. And this is the ultrasound imaging of the perfused model. You can look at the depth of the tumor, mark out the tumor with cautery, and then, of course, use your own suction to be able to resect out this tumor. The tumor is intentionally made irregular so that you don't just follow the plane. And at the very base, you find almost that pedicle that you have to skeletonize and either suture or clip. You can Start off by having a slow rate of breeding because you're in complete control, and then ramp it up when you're ready to actually control your suction quite well. Once you pass all these, you go into really the procedural models, and this is our extra peritoneal radical prostatectomy, very similar to our hydrogel radical prostatectomy for multiport, but with several modifications for single port, like the approach itself, which is most commonly extra peritoneal and the prostate size is slightly smaller because usually when people start doing this procedure, they start with smaller prostates. It has all the intricacies of our radical prostatectomy model with the different layers of dissection, as well as the different layers in the bladder. You can see both the mucosa and the musculosa. You can use cautery in this procedure, of course. All you need to do is just attach a cautery pad. And then, of course, our perfused partial nephrectomy model on our training model, which is our upper pole retroperitoneal model. We've created a model where it's, there is more than one tumor and very uniquely placed for retroperitoneal access. Once you're done, you do all the suturing, and then of course you unclamp the renal artery, and this is also ultrasound compatible. This is just a debrief showing you at the end of the simulation, trainees actually removing the specimen. You can see they actually peeked into the intraperitoneal cavity and how they violated that slightly, but you can also see that they can do a post-simulation autopsy to really evaluate their um, simulation and see what they did good, but more importantly, what they did bad. They then extract the kidney and are able to look at their margins, but also assess how deep or superficial, or if they got close to any critical structures. 